So we're going to start with a. We're going to start with this. Y equals three x plus seven. Okay, and from the get go, uh, we know that this is an equation because there's an equal sign. But we also know that if I put an x in, a value in for x, for instance, and evaluate this equation, I will get a value for y. And if I do a whole bunch of x's and generate a whole bunch of y's, I'm going to get a whole bunch of pairs, x comma y. Those pairs are ordered pairs. And so based on our definition of what a relation is, this is a relation because it represents a whole set of ordered pairs, uh, infinite set of ordered pairs for that matter, because that would be a line. And uh, well, we talked about it in class. So an infinite set of ordered pairs. If we graph this, we could apply the vertical line test, or if we're familiar with it, we would understand that this in fact is a function. But as, was, as it's written right now, this y equals 3x plus 7, there's nothing telling us that it's a function. We have to determine that it's a function. Okay? So once I determine that it's a function by doing the vertical line test or understanding it's a line, then in fact I can write it this way. Or in other cases, people will write functions in with this function notation telling you explicitly that the thing that I'm giving you or showing you is a function. And then you can proceed from there on, understanding the implications of whether something is a function or not. And those impl that implication we covered in class, uh, briefly, it's that every, every element of the domain is paired with or mapped to exactly one element in the range. Every x that I'm, that I'm capable of using in this function is mapped to a single y, exactly one y. No more than one y, no less than one y. And that then means that this relation is more constrained. It, in fact, is a function. So uh, what does that do for us? Well, there's actually a conceptual reason why we write this f of x thing. If you want to know about it, ask me in class or ask me during lab. Um, but another thing that, that we need to make sure we understand is there is no mathematics going on with this f of x. It is just a notation. So right now, when I say f of x, I'm saying that there's a function in terms of the variable x. A function in terms of the variable x. A function in terms of x. A function of x. f of x. So notice how that language peels down to f of x because as, as mathematicians, we wish to be efficient, or that's a nice way of saying that sometimes we want to be lazy. So f of x equals 3x plus 7. Um, is a function, and it's in terms of the variable x. So how do we use this notation? Uh, let's say that um, I want to evaluate this function when x is equal to 6. Well, I would write f of 6 is equal to 3, and wherever there's an x, I'm going to substitute the number 6 in, and I'm going to simplify this expression on the right-hand side. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 7, 25, so f of 6 is equal to 25. You could also then say my ordered pair for 6 is 6 comma 25, which is a representation of that kind of thing. These are the, all the ordered pairs. This is one specific ordered pair. Okay. Uh, let's shift gears and use a different function because I want a little bit more complexity. Not that it's going to be complex for you, but let's now change my function to this, 2x squared minus 7. Let's say I want to evaluate that function at x equals 3. Or sometimes we'll write uh, f of 3 is equal to like question mark or whatever. So f of 3 is equal to 2. Substitute the 3 in for the x. And now order of operations, 3 squared is 9. So I get 2 times 9 minus 7. And I get 2 times 9 is 18 minus 7. And that is equal to 11, of course. So f of 3 is equal to 11. So at any time you can hit pause, of course, from going too fast. I just want, don't want the video to be too, too long. What if I want to evaluate the uh, function, same function, uh, x at x equals, I don't know, uh, z. So that means that f of z is equal to 2z squared minus 7. 
since I can't do any more simplification of that expression, that is my function when x equals z. Let's go a little more complicated. What if I want to evaluate the function when x is equal to h plus 7? Then whenever I have an x, I'm going to substitute an h plus 7. And so this, using order of operations, is going to be 2 times, remember, an exponent means take the base and multiply it twice. And so I get that guy. Distribute all of this, so I get h squared plus 14h plus 49. Hit pause if you need to to make sure you get where all those numbers come from. I'm going to distribute the 2 now, so 2h squared plus 28h plus 98 minus 7. And then combining like terms, 2h squared plus 28h plus 91 is what f of h plus 7 is equal to. So one more example. Uh, same function, but now I want to know what x minus b is equal to. So what is the function equal when x is equal to x minus b? So f of x minus b is equal to 2x minus b, the quantity squared, minus 7. Again, distributive. And if, if you're not noticing it, this is structurally identical to what we just did which means the mechanical stuff that I need to do, the algebraic stuff I need to do, is exactly the same, even though it looks slightly different because there are no numbers in my binomial. x squared minus 2bx plus b squared. Sort that out. Hit pause and sort that out if you're not sure where those numbers come from. And now that you're back, if you hit the pause, I'm going to distribute my 2. Oops, I held that down too long. Let's clean that up a little bit. So 2x squared minus 4bx plus 2b squared minus 7. I have no like terms, so I'm done. f of x minus 6 is equal to, excuse me, x minus b is equal to that stuff. All right, that's it. Hopefully it was short enough. Take care.